Cab. It's Maximus here. This time with a review of the Dremel 8220. A long time ago, I had reviewed Dremel's other 10.8 volt cordless rotary tool. I can't, it's buried somewhere. I found one of the batteries, 1.0 amp hour battery, where this is now a, there we go, 2 amp hour battery. Much better tool, much more power. This is a garage sale find. Obviously, it's pretty beat up. The guy said it works fine, but left the charger out in the rain, and it got destroyed. Bosch bought Dremel in 1993, so it's owned them for uh, almost 30 years, and there's some super frustrating aspect about this, but not the operation. It's a bit bulkier and heavier. I do like the fact that it's a bit more modernized. Let me pull out the battery. The power switch locks out the lock button, and that's always been an issue with the Dremels, as you'll be running it. You know, accidentally hit the lock button, and that can really damage part components on the inside. So, like even on the Black & Decker RTX and other more modern Dremels, they do have an integrated lockout. Turn that on. Gives you a battery status. And it's actually a really smooth and linear uh, variable speed here. believe this is 30,000 RPM and wow that thing is jammed this thing has not been used much it does have a that must be painted in there there we go finally got this open it does have a hook to or a loop to be able to hang it or if, you know hanging off a tool belt or uh, up on a shop wall I do like that they that's been something that's been traditional for a long time is having these loops and I thought that this loop was painted in it's not there's just really, really extra thick tabs that hold it in. So not the easiest loop. You can hear it snap in there to use. So it's made in China, but it has a bunch more power. And I will do a little cutting test here. And it's just so much more improved using the pod style batteries versus this 10.8 volt style battery, which is two 18650s vertically and one horizontally. Now it's just, you know, the more would be the more standard design and actually I do feel fortunate this one came with the little three jaw chuck could use some lubrication there but it makes things easier when you're you know not just for running little drill bits but just for changing accessories and that type of stuff what chaps my hide though this is a modern unit owned by Bosch I bought a Bosch iDriver had a dead battery and no charger as well so I bought this battery and a charger new and the first time I used that Bosch iDriver, it burned up. So I've had this for about, I don't know, one, two months or so. And I was about to donate it this weekend when I ran into this Dremel. So I thought, oh, now I have a uh, reason to, to uh, keep this Bosch battery. Until I noticed, and this is what chaps my hide, Dremel's owned by Bosch. And these batteries, everything about these batteries is the same even the clips are in the same physical locations except for we'll notice that there's a thicker uh, rim here and a thicker rim on the front but it's actually just a similar molding and I'm gonna do my next video I'm gonna <laughs> butcher this battery so that it will fit in the Dremel and that's what the really the super annoying thing is the fact that Bosch would make the Dremel use the molding is the exact same uh, interior molding, although the Bosch battery is polycarbonate and the Dremel battery is uh, nylon, but same exact same interior moldings, all the exact same size, minus plus, minus plus, temperature, and then cell one, cell two, temperature, cell one, cell two. It, there's just no reason why they made this Dremel not accept this regular old Bosch batteries. It's just such a super, super annoying. And it really is the same. We have our little Bosch charger here. Let's see if our little dwell, uh, Dremel 12 volt max battery will fit. Oh, look, it fits. Oh, look, blinky, blinky, chargey, chargey. I mean, so you can charge the Dremel batteries with the Bosch chargers. You just can't use the Bosch batteries in a Dremel tool. The other thing is, is the way these the tabs on the Dremel are squared off to where there's an angle here. 
This will prevent you from using the Dremel battery in a Bosch 12 volt max tool because this will interfere and all you have to do is just cut a slice of the side of this off and then not much, just like a little bit right here. And then you could use the Dremel battery in a Bosch 12 volt tool and you would just have like an odd little gap here and a slightly larger gap there. So that is just chaps my hide that Bosch did that. Let's make a different set of tools that basically uses the same batteries, but we're just gonna change the molding on the batteries so that you have to buy one with a gray label and one with a black label. I mean, really? Anyway, I'm gonna go do a little performance test to show how much better this 8220 is versus the old school 10.8 volt. And then in the next video, I'll show butchering this Bosch battery so it'll fit in the Dremel. So as you can see, if you look at my old video, I do a Dremel or rotary tool power comparison and that old 10.8 volt Dremel, I mean, it just kept on cutting out and failing. It could barely do the job. This one, as you saw, I cut an average bolt. This is a 12 millimeter hex, six millimeter, metric six millimeter diameter bolt. And it cut it off, what it was at 10 seconds or something, something that you would expect a Dremel to do. I was using a fiber reinforced heavy duty wheel and, obvious, and as you can see, the newer version pod battery, or I guess they're both pod battery, but the more modernized version of the Dremel has a much better motor, works a lot better, is it just a much more usable tool, even one that's had some hours on it. A quick side note, if people didn't know, the one disadvantage to these little three, these little Jacob style three jaw chucks is that you, sometimes you can't get them tight enough to really hold, but they actually still have flats to use gem, Dremel wrenches on them. So you can actually tighten one of these trucks down with a wrench. And so that's what makes them so amazing is that you can just use one of these trucks and be able to grab tiny bits or just use whatever you want to use. And the collar even unscrews and you can use Dremel accessories. Although using a cordless Dremel with like a... Um, right angle adapter or one of those uh, snake shafts will just, they use, they suck up a lot of power and it will just crush your battery. Plus add a bunch of extra heat to the motor. So it's interesting that they do. I mean, it's neat that they still allow you to use things like the right angle adapters and stuff. Um, with the cordless Dremel, it's just gonna be really hard on it and it's gonna totally suck down your batteries. Anyway, that basically does it with my review. I think that the newer Dremel cordless tool, uh, rotary tools are just fine. Uh, they have an appropriate amount of power now, even though they're a bit heavier. It's just super annoying that uh, being owned by Bosch that they decided to use proprietary moldings on the batteries. So, um, you can't just interchange Bosch batteries and Dremel batteries. Just super annoying. So I'm going to end up, once again, in the next video will be a short video of me just butchering this Bosch battery so I can get it to fit in this Dremel because that's the only tool I have to use it with. Anyway, to finish this video out, I'm going to quickly pop open this clamshell, take a look inside, see what we got going on. Oh, just to finish off, I've reviewed this WEN, which is like one of the most popular rotary tools on Amazon, 7.2 volt. It's pretty weak, but if you're really careful with it, it works. The thing about the WEN is you have these four LED lights. And I guess that's the one thing that's really missing from the Dremel here is simply the fact that they decide they don't, and I'll, I understand it's difficult because they have the removable collar for the accessories, but they could have integrated a couple ultra bright LEDs here or maybe up here. It wouldn't just shine directly on it, but if you had a couple just up here, you could have got, they could have got a good angle to shine at the end of the, you know, right about this point where most accessories are going to be about an inch from the spindle. 
and that would have been real nice. And that's the only reason I actually keep this win around, even though it's weak, is because there's certain situations where it's kind of dark where I'm working, and having the light LED lights uh, makes up for the fact that it's weak. It's better to be able to see and get a job done slowly, because if you can't see, then you can't get the job done at all. So I'm knocking this down super easy, pull off the chuck here. Kind of like reviewing tools that are like this, um, just because it shows, at least on this one, we got some weird plastic build up there. I wonder what. Oh, this thing must have come loose at some point and actually spun around up here super fast and actually caused it to. Huh. Still, like we're. You know, this is a perfect example just because uh, it's had a lot of use and actually shown that the darn thing still works. Even if you need a screwdriver to pop open the clip. I mean, I understand keeping this from annoyingly self, or excuse me, popping open by itself, but it doesn't have to be that insane. Well, come on now. There, get out of there. We do have a retention clip on the thin part there. Pop that thing out. And oddly enough, it's T9s. Not T10s and not T8s. So kind of an odd fastener size. You would think they use something more standard like T8s because, or excuse me, T10s because that's that's going to be about the smallest size a lot of sets, torque sets have is T10. But that, in this case, won't do you any good. Not a whole lot of fasteners holding this clamshell together. And that's a, probably another disappointment here. We've got two, four, five in the clip. They could have figured out how to put maybe another one up here or something. Maybe, you know... Even though this one's held up, it just it's a little concerning, especially if you end up dropping it a lot. Or often. The one thing to be careful about when taking apart Dremels, and I've learned my lesson. You know, some kind of weird damage on that screw. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? The little lock thing, the little lock button is pretty well spring-loaded and it can want to pop out and fly around everywhere. We'll kind of get a little screwdriver in here. Ease that case apart. Doesn't really want to cooperate too much because it's been melted a little bit, but I think we just got it. And on many tools when you take them apart now this is not entirely wanting to cooperate there we go as most times the components stay in the side the side of the case that you remove is the side that the screws came out of but sometimes the components um, don't always cooperate like in this case definitely got a little water in there we can see a little bit of rust there's a lock button I was talking about that you want to be careful of I like this little uh, gear that they have there. Uh, that's a pretty solid locking mechanism. We can see a ball bearing up front, which is good to see. Kind of interesting. The power switch goes back here and actually just activates a micro switch. There's our power transistors to do the variable speed. The electronics are split, so this is like the main power board. You can see the battery goes right into this. And then this is the speed control board where we can see there's a chip. There's a, it's actually pretty complicated. The one thing I'm a little uh, suspicious of is there's no protection. Now, the variable speed did work just fine, but there's not really any protection there to prevent, you know, dust and grime from getting in there. So if you have a problem with the variable speed not working or a dead zone, take it apart and get some something like deoxit. 
or electronics cleaner and lubricant and spray it in there and uh, that will probably bring it back to life we can actually see small wires here so what it's which is interesting is we have the two main power wires that would be the two the main positive and negative that's driving it but we have two other terminals so what it's doing is one of them is going to the temperature sensor so it will shut down if the battery gets too hot another one's going to C2 so that's actually pretty intelligent it means that um, if one of the ba if the battery starts to become grossly imbalanced and one of the cells starts to get really low it will still cut itself off even though the overall voltage still may be enough to drive the tool to help you prevent from to really help you prevent uh, prevent you from ruining the battery let me zoom in uh, a whole lot here kind of hard to see but you can just make out the race surprisingly enough this is a ball bearing motor not a sleeve bearing motor I kind of thought they would have made it sleeve bearing but I guess for the RPMs they did want to make it ball bearing we can see that the front ball bearing is the main one is sealed and they have this little groove here and on both sides of the case there is a little groove these little areas here protrusions provides a little bit of a convolution this help prevent grit from riding right against that bearing seal obviously non-replaceable brushes on this motor but surprisingly enough they just use uh, clips so should be able to order a motor and just be able to quickly replace it if it wears out and but this one's had definitely had some time on it and there's still tons of brush left on it the brushes do tend to last a really long time on tools like this so that's a little look inside complicated electronics could have done better sealing for the variable speed switch but really surprising they're using a canned motor why at least it has a ball bearing in the back it may be a sleeve bearing in the front and then they're really relying on this larger primary bearing I can't pull this off to really see if that's a ball bearing in the front but it's definitely a ball bearing in the back and uh, Johnson brand motor not a lot else to say besides an old well-used Dremel 8220 that actually still works pretty decently and there's even the rubber pad to try to reduce vibration overall I mean as we can see this has a much bigger motor just because they have much more powerful batteries is one of the reasons is the reason that it actually performs so much better and just wanted to include that in the include this little tear down this uh excessively long video and i'll finish off with just the frustration that bosch has owned dremel for 30 years yet they still chose to have a, a proprietary molding for the dremel batteries over the bosch batteries even though you can charge both these batteries in each other's chargers super annoying really chaps my hide Anyway, once again, in the next video, I'm going to butcher this Bosch battery to make it work in this Dremel. Really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.